Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide for the Silent in Slay the Spire here in 2022. This is the second character you unlock, and this is a continuation of the beginner's guide that we started by booting up the Ironclad with a brand new account. Now what I like to do in my guides is create almost like a play along experience where I start out brand new just like you would if you're booting up the game and I talk through comprehensively and explain every aspect of the game the strategy the decision making the UI how to understand what's going on and my own thought processes to kind of uh, do almost like a over explained let's play so that you can go through play along with me perhaps or just see from the ground up what it's like to play the silent as you start out with her and what i feel about choices to make with this particular character and how she differs from the ironclad which is the only other character we can talk about right now because that's all we've seen so this is kind of a non-spoilery playthrough, and it would just be what you see if you boot up the game and are playing along for the first time. You have one win with the Ironclad, and now you're running into the Silent. Now, the Silent starts with 70 hit points and 99 gold, which is decidedly less hit points than the Ironclad. Um, it's the same amount of gold. She's a deadly huntress from the Foglands, and she eradicates foes with daggers and poison so the ironclad is like a straight ahead warrior with you know attacks and blocking and this is more like a sneaky rogue type character who does lots of quick attacks combos poisons um acrobatics and things like that so not relying on brawn and strength but agility now her starting relic is the ring of the snake which lets her at the start of each combat draw two additional cards remember the ironclad starts with the burning blood and recovers hit points so hit points are going to be different with the silent because we don't recover them that might like just seem like something you're used to after playing the ironclad a bit like oh i just you know regenerate hit points so this is great you do not recover hit points in the same way after every fight as the silent and you have less hit points, so you're a little bit squishier. So things need to be handled differently. But your relic, Ring of the Snake, is extremely powerful. Anytime in a deck building game like this, or any card game in general, card draw is so powerful because it allows you to have more options to cycle through, find your good cards easier, and to have the answers you need. Slay the Spire is a game that is constantly providing you with difficult situations that are kind of questions asking you for answers or solutions. And if you don't have them when you need them, you get severely punished by the damage coming in um, or whatever it is that the foe is doing. If you need to kill it fast or if you need to block or if you need to um, take down multiple foes at once, things like that. So having two cards at the start, you only get it on that first turn, but remember, most of the fights, the hallway fights, they last very few turns. We're talking about, you know, a two to four turns. And given that, you will always get this off, it will always happen for you, and your first turn will be set up better. So this is a great way to start. It's one of the most powerful starter relics because of that. Um... We have nothing unlocked with her because we've never tried her. So let's go ahead and embark. Greetings. I am Niao. Okay, so we meet the whale for the first time. Now in our first playthrough, uh, we started up the Ironclad and we walked through the game. And we didn't see the whale because you don't get to see the whale unless you either die and have to start over or you have beaten it once and you move on and you start the silent and um, you get to see the whale or if I were to play the ironclad again I would see the whale alright so the whale or Niao 
let's talk here. I brought you back. Uh, has brought us back from the dead to slay the spire again. And the whale is giving us two options. This is odd. I'm not sure, actually, if this happens every time you start the silent. I wonder if I just, like, shut the game off after I beat it, and it's treating it as though I died for some reason. Um, because these are kind of options you get um, if you don't reach the first boss. But it also could be the case that um, it, because it's the first time seeing Niao, and uh, Niao, Niao doesn't, I think, ever say that to you again, um, or maybe um, they want to limit the options to make things easy on me. So the whale will give you usually more rewards or more choices than this. And some of them will be risk-reward type things that do something positive but also do something negative. Uh, but two of them will be just like strictly positive. The third one will be kind of like, you can have a rare card for all your gold, or you can get a curse and upgrade some cards, or things like that does something bad. And then the fourth option from the whale will allow you to swap your starter relic with a boss relic, but those aren't given to me. I think what's going on is they just gate the options for you up at the, up at the beginning uh, to make the choice easier. So we could either choose to have seven hit points starting out, or to give the next three com um, fights one hit point, the next enemies one hit point in the fights that we do. For three fights, every enemy in that fight will have one hit point. Now, the whale bonus, as it's talked about in Slay the Spire um, conversations, is one of the most important choices that you make in the game. It can be rushed through, uh, but it's actually something you want to think about. So... Before you select this, know that you can actually, without making a choice, look at your deck, okay? And you can also look at the map. Now, let's first look at the deck. This is the silent deck. You'll notice that we have 12 cards, all right? The Ironclad does not. We start with some more cards, and I believe this is... Uh, to counterbalance the draw seven. So we'll draw seven the first turn and then five the next turn because we have 12 cards exactly until we start adding cards to our deck. We get five strikes and five defends. And here are the special cards, the unique cards that you get as an ironclad. You get survivor, which is one energy for eight block, which is great, but you have to discard a card of your choice to play the card. So if you have a card in your hand, besides Survivor, when you play it, you gotta discard it, or if you have multiple cards, you gotta pick one and discard it. If you play it as your last card, you can still play this card, and you just discard nothing. It's not part of the casting cost, it's just an effect of this card when it comes into play. Now, this can be used tactically to your advantage. Like, if you have a negative status card or a curse or something, you can just get rid of it and not suffer its effect. Or there are several cards that the Silent has that trigger off of being discarded, and this can help you. Uh, but for the most part, especially early in the game, you don't have any synergies with this, and you just kind of have to play around it. Neutralize is a fantastic card when upgraded. Starting out, it's not that great, um, but when you upgrade it, it, it uh, becomes much more powerful because it will apply two weak instead of just one, okay? Now, this is a card that you start to see what the Silent is all about. The Silent is not going to be able to block things with a shield, um, you know, so she needs to weaken her enemies and dodge and do other things to kind of mitigate damage to compensate for the fact that she doesn't have the same kind of armor and blocking that the Ironclad does. All right, so we have a 12 card deck. Okay, now we could give ourselves seven hit points, which is cool, but I want to just tell you right away, um, let me click this again, this whale bonus giving enemies in the next three combats one hit point is pretty much one of, if not the most powerful whale bonuses you can get. It is crazy, I think statistically 
they have numbers that like people who play a lot if they take this they have just higher win chances overall with this be and i'll show you why let's look at the map you see that the next three fights that we're going to get into these are all hallway fights with the enemy icon all right what you want to look for with that is is there a path where you can snipe an elite okay and what that would mean is you're looking for a way to get to an elite with only fighting two hallway fights so that you can hit an elite that has one hit point and basically get a free elite kill get a get a relic chance at a good card get a bunch of gold now the way that this is organized unfortunately we don't get that uh, we could go here but there's no way for us to get to an elite without fighting at least three hallway fights first unfortunately on all of these four potential starting paths so what that means is we're going to basically just have to deal with three easy fights but even if you can't snipe an elite which is like the dream it doesn't happen all the time with that and, it, and you can't guarantee it most of the time like you're gonna have to go through an unknown spot and it could be a fight and then you use up one of the three charges from um this will bonus and it doesn't work out for you okay but this gift from Niao is extremely powerful because even if you don't get an elite, you get free fights, which, look, we don't have very many hit points. And if they have one hit point, we're going to kill it, okay? We're gonna we're guaranteed to kill it on the first turn, um, pretty much, given the fact that we draw seven cards. And we get a free card reward then, free money, and maybe even a potion. So we're going to be in a position where we can get to a rest site and we can upgrade a card because we haven't taken damage. We don't need to rest. And we're going to get to see a lot of stuff. So what we want to do is just pick a path that seems reasonable. I always like to look at the elites, okay? And I want to try to take two, if not three elites, and we're going up into the Hexaghost. So the Hexaghost um, is a fight that we haven't seen yet because all we saw was the Guardian. So this is one of the other Act 1 potential bosses. And uh, it's a pretty straightforward and easy fight, provided we uh, can kill it before the burden cards start to uh, catch up with us and, you know, we can we can block its big attacks. Uh, but we'll talk about that when we get there. So for us right now, I like a path that's over to the left that goes through these two elites. If we were to take uh, over on the right, the most we could get is two elites. This way, we can get two elites, If and if we're good enough, we could even get three, if we feel strong enough. So I like where we're going over here, and I like this way of getting there, going um, enemy, unknown, enemy, unknown, enemy, and then rest. Now, because we have um, this whale bonus that gives three fights one hit point, provided we don't get a hallway fight on one of these unknowns we are going to get here with a lot of hit points and this means we can use this as an upgrade we could either take a fight to get a card or go over here and then fight an elite after having filled up if we need to and if we don't we upgrade we're doing good treasure and then we fight another elite now if we take this elite we have to fight another elite afterwards so we need to be really strong here so that we don't get brutalized and just die right here then we go to a shop and we get to go to a fire uh, if we want. Unfortunately, we have another shop, which is kind of redundant, unless there was nothing here that we spent money on, and then we'd want to spend it here. And we have a choice, depending on how strong we are, of either going to the left and avoiding this elite, or taking it on and trying to get a relic. So that's the path I think I want to take, and we're going to pick it right here. Uh, I don't like taking you know a path like this or something which is all enemy fights into the elite I'll, I'll just be too weak even though these first three fights i'll dominate then we'll be starting to fight enemies from the harder attack pool and go into an elite without the possibility of resting it's just not great so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to take this and we get Niao's lament that's what this whale bonus is called it's called Niao's lament and it has a number three on it because it's going to give us three charges 
And every time we use one, it'll tick down until zero and it gets grayed out. All right. So he grants our wish and we leave and we need to pick our path and we're starting on the far left. And it's a jaw worm with one hit point strike. Tremendous. It's dead. Remember, it has one hit point, so anything we do there, sneeze on it and it dies. And you could see our Nyao's Lament has gone down from three to two. We get 15 gold and we get our first choice. So, as you can see, all of the silent cards are green as the ironclads are red. And we have some options. A lot of what we talked about with the ironclad holds true here, which is that what you want for Act 1 is damage. It's a DPS check. You need to do damage. The elites will outscale you if you can't do damage, and Hexaghost will also outscale you um, if you can't kill him before your deck becomes filled with like burns and burn plus cards. So uh, we don't want that to happen, so we need damage. That's what we're looking for. So something like Deflect, even though it's zero energy, it's not really doing what we want right now. Sneaky Strike is, like I talked about before, it's something that synergizes with Survivor because Survivor makes you discard a card. And Sneaky Strike says deal 12 damage. If you have discarded a card this turn, you gain two energy. So what this means is it's played sort of for free if you have discarded a card. So if you get the dream, which is turn one, when you have seven cards or whatever, most likely to happen on that turn, you draw, okay, Survivor, and you draw Sneaky Strike, then you get to do Survivor, discard some card you don't need, then play Sneaky Strike, it does 12 damage, you get your energy back, and then you can just pop off and do a whole bunch of things. So that's cool. However, it is two energy, we only have three, and it requires for it to be at its most effective that we catch um, the survivor in the same hand as this. And so it requires that we draw them both at the same time. Otherwise, we don't get the combo bonus. So um, I'm not like a gen enormous fan of this card. Also, it looks like it's free, but it's not. You still have to have two energy to play this card first to even get the refund okay now remember you can right click it and up see the upgrade it turns into 16 damage if we have two energy so that's pretty good but one reason i'm not huge on this card is number one you have to line it up and that always is not the case um <laughs> you know in slay despire that you get two cards that work if you get a lot of draw you get a lot of cycle you can make it happen then it gets better you have more things to discard it gets better but right now it's it's not great and also, the Silent can get a whole lot of benefit from playing multiple attacks in the same round. And while this can give you the energy to do that, if you don't draw what you need, then it's just two, da two energy for 12 damage, which you would get from playing two strikes. And it doesn't um, scale off of strength and things like that. So overall... This is a damage card, and you could take it, but I'm not huge on it. Now, on the other hand, Sucker Punch is a cool card, but I'm not huge on it either. If we upgrade this, you'll see it gets much better because it applies too weak, weak for two turns. So Sucker Punch is one of those cards not really like, um, you know, the Ironclad uh, Wave card that does something similar to this, but um, Iron Wave, I believe it's called. It's an offense and defense card. It's like it does some damage, but it puts a negative debuff, which decreases incoming damage. Um, and I like it. It Right now, I mean, again, what we're trying to do is either remove or upgrade these basic cards that we have that are like C-level power and make our deck stronger so that we can win. And a strike does six damage. Sucker Punch by itself does seven, and it puts a weak. So I'm going to take it. And we go here, and what do we get? All right, so this is Big Fish. This is a really fun event. We can either heal for 23 hit points. We can take the banana and heal. We can take the donut, okay, and get five max hit points. Remember, when you take max hit points, 
you heal, so we would go to 75 max hit points and heal up to that amount. Or we could take the box and get the regret curse and get a relic. Now, if we get regret, you can mouse over this to see what regret does. It will make it so at the end of our turn, we lose hit points equal to the number of cards in our hand. Now, I don't really like this um, as the silent because our hit points are kind of uh, more of a concern than they are with, uh, you know, the ironclad where like you could go perfect and then just heal through this. But we're drawing extra cards anyway on the first turn. So if you draw this turn one and you, you know, only play three or four cards, you're just going to take some damage uh, from this card. And that stinks. Also, curses are bad because they slow down your deck. Uh, they gum up the works. Like, you're not on turn one. Um, you're drawing five cards. This is 20% of your hand. And you're, like, looking for a specific thing and you just get this. Not only is it hurting you, um, it's, you know, taking away the opportunity of drawing the card that you needed. So, overall, I don't like curses. I don't like adding them. This can be okay to take the box if you look at this and you see, you know what? Like, the next square is a shop. So, I can just pay the whatever gold my remove card cost is at that moment, if I have that much gold, and remove the curse. And then it's like I'm buying a random relic for that amount. And you can kind of justify it that way. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to take the max hit points. I'm going to go up to 75 and give ourselves a little bit more of a cushion and be happy about it. And we're going to go here and we get one of these fights. Now, this can be weird where it's like if you don't draw two attacks, then you might not win on the first turn. But luckily, we draw a million cards. So I'm just going to use whatever cards I want and kill them. And we get 14 gold. We get a potion. It's a flex potion. And this is another one of those cards that, like, really does well with multiple attacks in the same turn. And why, you know, something like Sneaky Strike can be less effective at times. <coughs> I'll take this. And let's see what cards we get. Okay. So we get a Combo Wombo card. Okay, deal six damage for each attack played this turn. This is fantastic if you're playing a bajillion attacks, but right now it's too early for us to take this card because at most with three energy, what, we just played two attacks and then this is going to do, you know, 12 damage. Maybe if we draw our zero cost attack, we played three and that's the dream and then we're dealing 18 damage with this. But guess what? If we play two attacks plus the zero cost attack and then this, we aren't blocking. So you got to be in a situation where you're like, oh yeah, I don't care about blocking. And maybe if you can burn them down really fast, that's good. But outside of that, not so much. I like having the option to do what I want. And if you draw this um, by itself with like four block cards in your hand, it's dead. It, it does zero damage because you have played no attack cards this turn. So later, if we have a deck with a lot of zero cost and cheap attack cards and we have ways of playing a bunch of attacks, this could be okay. But right now it's not great. Dash is the definitive attack and defense card like I was just talking about before with uh, the comparison to Iron Wave. Um, it is 2 energy to deal 10 damage and get 10 block. Uh, it's a very good card. I like it a lot. It's an uncommon, by the way. These are all uncommons. They're blue. And Riddle with Holes. 2 energy to do 3 damage 5 times. So it's 2 energy for 15 damage. Okay. Um, that's good. However... It gets way better if you have strength. If I had a Vajra or something that gave me plus one strength, this card now does four damage five times. It goes, it scales beautifully with any extra attack damage, but it also gets wrecked if we lose strength. And one of the elites on Act 1, the Lagavulin, takes strength. And so this loses power in that fight because, you know, if you have minus one strength, well, then it goes down. And if he lives long enough to do it twice to you, this is doing nothing. So in this situation, the silent deck is balanced, right? With like, you got five defend, you got five strike, and then you got your kind of other defend card. So you actually have a lot of defense. We got another attack, but I'm going to take dash because dash is kind of both, and it's a big card. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. Um, if you play two strikes, it does more damage. Well, of course it does, but it doesn't give you block. 
But it's also nice to just have everything in one card, because if you draw this, you're like, okay, I'm going to be able to block, and I'm going to be able to do damage this turn. So that's kind of like that problem solved. Upgraded, it becomes even stronger on both fronts, so it's fantastic. And we'll take it and be happy. Okay, now I could go left, use my last remaining charge of Nyao's Lament, and then fight the Elite. But remember, we're going to go this way, and we'll do this. And what do we get? Hey, 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 it's our buddy. Okay, it's Ranwind. Now, here's our choices. So, Ranwind um, is a really cool event that you can get uh, because basically he can't hurt you <laughs> and you are usually going to get a relic here. So, he says, um, it's me. You have any goods for me today? The usual. A fellow like me can't make it alone, you know? And so, he says he's going to trade. A random relic to you for one of these options we can give him our sucker punch we can give him 90 gold or we can give him a flex potion or we could attack him and make him go away if we don't want to lose any of these things here's what I think number one I don't want to lose my card I like this I'm fine with it it's not the best card but I want to keep it number two 90 gold for a relic most of the time this is actually pretty good this is like a good trade but I know there's a shop, there's actually two shops on my path that I proposed, so I'd like to have gold for that. And now he's going to trade my flex potion, okay? If I had a better potion, I might not consider it, but flex potion can be good, but it's really not one of my favorites. It's like one turn, and it can be hard to make it work for, for a whole ton of damage, so... I'm thrilled with the the opportunity to, tr to trade this potion, which is a one-turn use thing, um, for a relic, which will provide a benefit me for me for the rest of the run. Yes. And sweet fancy Moses, we got a shuriken. Okay. So, like I said, not only does the Silent have a bunch of cards that promote playing many, many attacks over the course of a turn. There are relics that do that, and this is one of them. So we just got some scaling, everybody. Every time we play three attacks in a turn, we get a strength for the rest of the fight. So if we get the opportunity to get cheap, easy attack cards, we can start scaling our strength. This is a very nice relic to have. Tremendous, in fact. Uh, and this will help us throughout the course of the run. So trading a flex potion for this is through the roof fantastic we go into our next fight and this is our last charge of Niao's Lament you can see it's grayed out we've lost it now the shuriken if we look at it has a zero by it it's going to keep track of how many attacks you play in the round and look right here we have the opportunity because we're the silent we drew a bunch of cards we found three attacks it was hard but we did it We don't get to play them all because the guy's dead, but we would have had an awesome start there where we hit him for a bunch of damage and gave ourselves a strength. All right, now I will take the money and look at the cards. Ooh, okay. So we got some uncommon cards and a common card. Calculated Gamble says discard your card, then draw that many cards and exhaust it. All right. Prepared says draw a card and discard a card and uh, this is great with sneaky strike of course discard uh, and then escape plan says draw a card and if you gain if you draw a skill gain three block okay now calculated gamble is also good with sneaky strike if you draw it after you play it because then you've discarded that turn now for us though we don't have that so what do we want honestly if you skipped right here you'd be fine with me like, these are not phenomenal cards for us right now. They're okay. This is kind of like, I drew everything that I didn't want, so I'm going to discard my hand and try to do this again. Helps me cycle faster, that kind of thing. But it's not tremendous, okay? You can make this great, but we don't need it at the moment. It's a one-use thing. Prepared is um, kind of like a cantrip. You have to discard something. 
if it's uh, the last card in your hand, um, it's worthless. You know, you draw a card, and then you have nothing left, so you immediately have to discard what you drew, unless you're trying to put things in the discard pile. And Escape Plan says draw a card, and if you get a skill, you get three block, and it costs zero. These all cost zero, by the way. Um, you know, of course, the thing with Escape Plan is, if you didn't have it in your deck, you would have drawn the card that you were drawing anyway, but you have a chance of getting three block. These all work in decks that are looking to draw a lot and cycle a lot. Uh, about half my deck are skills. This is the kind of card where it's like, against Hexaghost, you could just draw the negative status effect. Or against the tri Sentries, you just draw a, a daze, and it does nothing for you, and you're disappointed. Um, this card, however, is pretty good against the burn cards, if you can save it for that long. And it's, you know... Good against tri Sentries, I guess, if you get a bunch of daze and you've been saving this. Um, I don't really like any of these. I'm not huge on it, but I'll take Calculated Gamble just for that situation where if we get everything that we didn't want and we want to reset. I would have been fine by passing there, though. If you pass there, you're fine with me. All right, and we go into the rest site, and luckily for us, hey, look at that. We don't need to rest, so let's upgrade. Now, what card do we want to upgrade? What does this do when we upgrade it? It no longer exhausts. So that's kind of nice. It means for the rest of the fight, we get to keep drawing this, okay? But do you want that? <laughs> Sometimes you want to get rid of this and don't want to keep drawing it. So it's definitely not something I feel like intentionally upgrading right now. Um, for me, you know, Survivor Plus goes to 11 block. That's great. Neutralize goes to 4 damage and 2 weak. That's tremendous. This is 9 damage and 2 weak. And dash also becomes really good. Strike and defend. Meh. So I'm going to go ahead and do neutralize. Neutralize upgraded is a really good way to mitigate damage coming in. It's zero energy, so we're going to play it every turn, no matter what, whenever we draw it. Whereas Sucker Punch is awesome too, but we might not want to play it uh, because we need to block or something. So I'm going to do this. All right, and then I'm going to... I'm actually going to go for a card reward. Am I? No, you know what? A lot of the Act 1 unknowns... By the way, if you look at the Slay the Spire resource, you can see what all the possibilities are. A lot of the Act 1 unknowns um, do damage to you in exchange for something pretty reasonable. And I have full hit points, so why not? Let's see what we get. Oh, we got to fight anyway. Okay, so we're going to get that card reward. Now look at this big dude. This guy's like, I bet you wish you draw, you drew your weakened card. And I'm like, yes, I do. Luckily for us, um, he's doing 16 damage. Now he behaves like the slime boss. He's like a smaller version of it. He's the large acid slime. And he has this ability called split. So if we get him to half hit points, he will spit, split into two smaller slimes with the same hit points that he had when you split him. So if we get him down to 33, he'll split into two 33 health slimes. But what you want to do on something like this is try to split it with the fewest amount of hit points possible to make the two slimes weak. So I'm going to dash to give myself 10 block and do 10 damage. And I'm going to defend and pass the turn. So we take one damage. All right. Now it wants to debuff us. So here's time for us to start... Uh, scaling up, and scale up we will. If I Sucker Punch, it does 7. And if I do 12, it, he will go down to 37, which is not enough for him to split. But what's really cool is we will get a trigger on our Shuriken, all right? And so we get an extra strength, and we'll end the turn. Um, I could play this card, all right? 
So what, what would happen is um, I would discard my defend and I would draw a card. Now, what are the cards that I have here? Um, I could draw neutralize and then I could try to play it, but if I did play it, I would split and I don't want to split. The other cards, if I drew them, uh, I would not be able to play them. So I'm not going to use this right now because I don't want to draw one of those cards and lose it. I'm just going to end the turn. I'm good. Okay. So, yes. Great hand. <laughs> this is actually like the perfect hand because we're going to trigger um, Shuriken again. So we're going to go dash. Now, by the way, we've been weakened, so we deal 25% less damage, which stinks, but we're going to hit, weaken it, and strike. We did... Uh, this This didn't hit us that badly because we had the strength, and now our strength is up, and they're going to make 221 health slimes, okay? That's okay for us. This debuff... The Weaken will go away when it splits, but that's okay. It's better to have two 21s than what we could have had. Now, the downside of this is you might get into a situation where they both want to attack, which is indeed what we see right here. And so, given the fact that they both want to attack, we could say, well, what if we did Calculated Gamble? We would draw into cards like this. We have no way, with the cards that we have, of doing enough damage to kill one of these in one turn. Um, so, unfortunately, this is just a tough fight for us. This is from the second pool of fights, uh, and we don't have anything tremendous to deal with this. Sometimes, they, they, the AI has a random chance to do stuff. They aren't both always going to attack. So, sometimes they'll, like, one will debuff and one will attack, or they both could debuff. But because they're doing this... I don't even need to play this right now. I've, I actually drew three defends, which is pretty much what I'm going to play. If I drew my, um, you know, neutralize, that'd be great, but I didn't. And playing this won't draw it because it's going to draw from the deck first. So, eh? Now, with Calculated Gamble, if you want to play perfectly, what you always want to do is look at the cards you have remaining and just see if, like, do you want to get rid of one of these at random? Because if you do, then play this just to cycle through these so you'll shuffle your deck and draw what you want to get more often. But honestly, um, this is okay with me. Like a bunch of... Uh, this is what we'll guarantee draw next turn. And this is enough damage to not kill anything. But we could block and weaken. But we do have two strengths and our weaken wears off. So actually it is enough damage to kill something. Because our weekend will wear off, and then we will have 9 plus 8 is 17, plus 8 is 25. So we will have enough if we draw this to kill one of them. So let's keep it. So, again, like I said in the Ironclad video, um, it is always important, okay, to look at your draw pile and your discard pile and calculate what's going to happen next and what you're doing. So now this guy wants to attack and put a negative debuff on us, and this guy is just debuffing. So in this situation, what you want to do is kill the one that's going to do damage to us. So we're going to go one, two, three, and we boost our strength again. So we now next turn, we should be good. However, we do get weakened, so that's a shame. And now he wants to do 10 damage to us. So uh, what's great for us right here is we just dash, we fully block, and we sucker punch, and we weaken him, and we're done. We fully block this, and we're just going to kill him right now. Almost didn't draw it, but we did. Even if we did drew another defend, we'd just defend up and wait till next turn, but we got it. All right, so we got 15 more gold, and we got some cards, and we got some cool ones. So, um, All Out Attack is a AoE card that makes you discard a card at random. So it's a really good card in that it does 10 damage to everyone for one energy. However, it's unfortunate because it discards a card at random. And so what you want to do is kind of play this card last... 
and then you don't care, you know, what it discards because you have no energy left anyway. Bouncing Flask is great for putting poison on things. Poison is a debuff that applies a damage over time or a dot on the enemy. And for whatever their poison counter is, they take that much damage at the start of their turn and then the poison counter goes down by one. So if they have nine poison on them, they will take nine damage at the start of their turn and the counter goes down to eight. You can keep adding to that stack, etc. So it's a really cool way to do damage over time. And distraction is like, hey, I will um, add a random skill into your hand that costs zero this turn and then it gets exhausted. Um, what is it? Upgrade to, to zero cost. Right. So this can be good, but it can also be rando garbage. So I'm not like over the moon on this card, but some decks can make it work um, if you're trying to play a lot of skills. Uh, for me, I have no AoE right now, so all out attack is just fine. Bouncing Flask is good if you want to go into Poison. It's better against Hexaghost than all out attack is, uh, for that matter. But this is two energy right now, um, so it's kind of a little bit trickier to play it, given that. And I, you know, I want to be blocking and stuff. And Bouncing Flask, while it's really strong, you don't get to control where it goes. So I'm going to take all out attack. But if you wanted to get into poison and start just going heavy on poison, that's cool. You could do that too. And we're going to go into the elite fight. Now, unfortunately, we have no potions, um, but we want the relic. So let's go. Hey, look at what we got. We got ourselves the Tri-Centuries. Now, Tri-Centuries, I do want to mention it. If we would have took Bouncing Flask, it's not that great against Tri-Centuries because they start with an artifact charge. Which, what that means is, like, every time I try to hit it with poison for that first hit, they wouldn't get poisoned. Now, after that, you can poison them, but it's a bit of a, a blow to the stomach to, like, pay two energy to remove artifact charges. Now, you can get lucky. You could hit the same one three times in a row, and then you would apply some poison to it. Just the first one would get canceled by the artifact charge. But even then, it's just kind of like, this is very slow, and um, I'm, I'm upset about that. So, what do we want to do? Look at my choices. Honestly, I like these other cards better. Sucker Punch is good, but they have the artifact charge, so meh. So I'm going to play Calculated Gamble. I'm going to draw a new hand. And I like this a lot better. Because look what we get to do. We get to play three attacks, which boost our Shuriken, give us a strength. We get to block for full with dash, and we get to take off one of their artifact charges for later. Now remember with tri sentries what you want to do is take out the one on the outside that has the lowest hit points first. So we're going to target this guy. One. Two. Artifact charge gone. Three, we get a strength. Now... You might say, why take off the artifact charge on this guy if you plan on killing it first? Like, why not start up one of the other ones that will be alive longer for the fight so you can weaken it? And I totally understand that. But um, I just want the damage more than I care about the artifact charge. And I have a possibility of redrawing, you know, Sucker Punch or something. And if I can't kill this guy, next turn he wants to do 9 damage, so I could weaken it. Okay. Oh, we got there. We got there. All right. So this is a turn where... Um, I'm going to take damage. Because I'm not going to block. But it's like... Even if I blocked for full with what I have drawn here, I would be taking 8 damage. Instead, I'm going to kill one of them and take 9 damage which I think is a better trade. And we're going to be doing 11 damage to all of them with all-out attack, which is 
you know, the reason we took this card, and it really shines in this fight. So all we have to do is play all out attack last so we don't play our strike. We will tick up our Shuriken, and this wouldn't be possible, what I'm about to do, without the strength that we got. If I didn't have this strength, I would have to put all of my attacks into this, this sentry to kill it. But luckily, we don't have to worry. So I just go one, and I'm now going to work on this one, and there. You saw a random card got discarded, but because, you know, we played that in the right order, we don't care. Uh, this guy wants to do 9 damage, which we will easily block. And I'm g even though this guy is going to attack us next round and we'd love to kill him, I'm going to keep working on this guy because he's the lowest. And then I will play my Defend and Survivor. And choose a card to discard. Unfortunately, I have to discard that if I want to block for full. And so it doesn't etherealize, it's in here, and I have to live with it, which sucks. I just didn't want to take damage. You could take damage there and discard your own defend if you wanted. Ah, uh, but we, we drew really well here. Beautiful. Alright. So we are going to do this. Kill that guy, because... Hey, how good is that, right? And then we're going to do a ton of damage to this guy, like... Ah, uh, we can't do more, that's right. Out of energy, darn! Got ahead of myself. Full block. Oh god, this is good. Hi. Hello. Goodbye. So, we were able to play the attacks. And remember, you just have to play all out of talc last so that you get to play the cards that you want to play and don't accidentally discard it. And we get 31 gold because it's an elite, so more gold. And we get Paper Crane. So... Paper Crane, for us, is disgusting. What Paper Crane does is it says that enemies with weak now deal 40% less damage instead of 25%. Now remember, we have Neutralize, which weakens, but we also took a Sucker Punch. So we have two sources of weak, and weak now it almost reduces their damage to half. This is like going to save us so much health over the course of the run, it is gross. So we're getting very lucky with our Relics here. We'll take Paper Crane... And let's see what the cards that we get. Well, well, well. We can get another Sucker Punch. We can get a Backstab. Or we can get an Outmaneuver. I don't want another Sucker Punch, even though Weak is good for us. Outmaneuver is just not a card I love. Too slow. And Backstab... <laughs> It's okay. It's a lot of damage. You can take out some things with it. But sometimes you want to block. And this takes up uh, a draw slot because it's innate. So it says start each combat with this card in your hand. Which means one of your seven starting cards is a backstab. But remember, we do get seven. So it's not as impactful as if we only drew five. And because we have the Shuriken, this is a great way to ensure we get to three attacks faster... And Backstab is just really good because blocking can be suspect. So if we can burn things down quickly, um, we have a higher chance of surviving. And so because we have this, uh, I'm down with this. I like this card just fine, by the way. But sometimes, um, you know, you're not as happy to get it. But it exhausts, so you only have to worry about it the time you play it. Now, if you draw it and you don't need it, you get to draw it again and use it then. All right. Backstab. Beautiful. And let's go to the right. And we got a bottle of lightning, which says, Upon pickup, choose a skill and start each combat with this card in your hand. Now, here's the deal. Is there a skill that we want to start with? Let's look at this. <laughs> Is there one? I'm going to be honest with you. The only skill I want to start with is Calculated Gamble. And even then, I'm not super thrilled about that. Bottle Lightning is like kind of... Eh. We don't have a great skill. I don't want to start with Survivor. I certainly don't want to start with a basic Defend. I think starting here is okay. Because if we just totally whiff on our first hand, 
um, we will be able to redraw. We'll play backstab, of course, and then just redraw, you know? Uh, so that's fine, but again, now we have two cards that are locked into our first hand, and we're only drawing five randomized cards because of this. And if we play backstab, we're not redrawing. So I think there's a lot to recommend just skipping the relic, but I do like the idea of having another chance to, to find the solution on turn one. So I am going to bottle up this calculated gamble. It's not huge, but it's okay. All right, let's dive into the elite. Okay. So. I do think that we've handled Lagavulin before. But in case we missed him with our Ironclad, or her as it may be, Lagavulin is asleep and will stay asleep for three turns. But if you break all of the armor, Lagavulin will wake up. So this means that if you're on this fight, what you want to do is set up by playing any powers or doing anything at all as preamble before you actually start attacking and enduring the hits that Lagaboom put into you. So let's look at our deck. And honestly, there isn't anything that I would want too dramatically, maybe some weak, but uh, we have it right here. So I think we just go all in right now and uh, build up our Shuriken. So one two three and then with our last energy to all out attack and we're not going to use this so what happens once you wake like a villain up is that it will do two attacks uh, at this ascension it is 18 damage twice and then it will start putting a debuff on us that will decrease both our attack and our defense, our strength and dexterity. And what that means is that we will be much less able to hurt Lagavulin. So we need to kill them quickly before we are unable to block or damage Lagavulin. So we'll do this. This. And look at that. With weakness and dash and our paper crane all synergizing together we take no damage it's amazing and we got our uh, shuriken to trigger so we'll be able to kind of outpace the strength drain that lagavulin puts but that's it all right one two and uh, i'm going to take damage here i could have just blocked tw you know twice and not taken damage but i want to take down Lagavulin as quickly as possible. So we'll take two. All right, now Lagavulin is gonna do this like debuff. So um, I was really hoping I would draw my calculated gamble <laughs> right there, but of course it's randomized. But you know, getting defense on this turn are terrible. Uh, you wanna be doing the damage right now because Lagavulin can't do anything so it's like a free turn to attack. Unfortunately, we drew terribly, and um, my calculated gamble is in here. So we're gonna need some card draw or something else to cycle. But here we go. So our soul has been siphoned. You see our strength went from two to one, and our dexterity is now minus one. So this is quite poor for us, but not much we can do. So. We're going to look at our hand, and I don't really have lethal damage visible, so I think I'll just have to do this and this and try to kill next turn. What are my chances? Uh, very good. We draw that, and it's over. So we did get hurt pretty badly here, um, but... That's okay. It's an elite fight. It happens. All right. And so we got 32 gold. 
We got the Regal Pillow, which is terrific because um, this will help us heal more when we rest, if we need to rest. You generally don't want to rest, but if you have to, the Regal Pillow is good for just giving you a ton of hit points and making the rest more worthwhile. And we got a Power Potion, which is going to be beautiful for our scaling, and we'll probably save that for the boss. And we get to add a card. So what do we want? Okay, so we have a variety of cards here. We've already seen Finisher, and we're still not taking this card. We don't have enough stuff to make that good. If I look at myself, in terms of zero damage attacks, I have two. So if I drew it on the first turn, I would guarantee to have Backstab. If I drew Finisher, and I played Neutralize, Backstab, and, you know, Dash and Sucker Punch, then... Well, no, I couldn't do all of that, like... Strike, Strike, Finisher, or something like that. Yeah, it does a lot of damage, um, but... It's, it's still not marvelous for me. Choke is two energy for a 12 damage hit, and then whenever you play a card this turn, the enemy loses three hit points. So it's very good if you are playing a whole bunch of cards, you know, you have a bunch of zero cost things that you're doing, but we really don't, you know? Like, we could dance around with uh, Calculate a Gamble and, and, and Neutralize, but that's about it. We're going to run out of energy too fast to make this good. But we did get offered a Backflip, Backflip is just a tremendous card because it's a basic block already. It's one energy for five block, but you draw two cards. So it helps you cycle through your cards, uh, and I like it a lot. So we're going to take it to get some flexibility. And we get to go into a shop here with 224 gold, which is uh, a good amount of money. And it's such a good amount of money uh, that we're, we're unfortunately, we, we weren't able to get the molten egg, but we can get a bunch of good stuff here. So we could get a Sneko Skull, which is good if you're going for poison, but we aren't. Uh, we don't really have any poison at all, so meh. Um, we have the option to get a Footwork on sale, which is ridiculous. Uh, footwork is one of the best powers on the Silent. It is the way that you scale your block. With a bunch of these, you can uh, defend and hang in there. Now, it's, you know, not the be-all, end-all, but it's really, really good. Two dexterity is tremendous. So, I think we'll definitely buy this. We could remove, you know, a strike, if we like, as well. Uh, let's see where we are in the map. We probably want to go for this elite. We're going to hit this shop, though. So, we have to remember, we're going to hit two shops right here. Uh, we'll probably upgrade and then shop and elite. If that's the case, if there's nothing here that I want, maybe I save my money. There is a ghost in the jar, which is fun. Uh, gives you an intangible for a turn. And we are fighting Hexaghost, so, um, you know, you could use this on turn two on the Hexaghost when the Hexaghost does its big attack, and it will be quite powerful. Um, but I think that will be okay on turn two anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to take the footwork right away. Um, I don't really feel like buying a poison potion or a swift potion. Chrysalis says shuffle three random skills in your draw pile and they cost zero. I mean, it can be good, uh, but mm, not huge on it. And, you know, nothing else just really jumps out at me. And I don't want to remove here and remove it to the next one. So I'm going to actually save all my money and see if anything uh, looks great at the next shop. Okay, so I'm going to go to this rest site. Now, of course, we could rest and, you know, get 37 health back. But that's a, a massive overheal. Let's go ahead and upgrade a card. So we've already upgraded our um, weaken card. And... Now it's time to think about what else we want to upgrade. So, I like the idea of upgrading footwork, honestly. It goes from two to three. Makes this block even better. Seems pretty good. And that's where I'm going to go. So, what we get now is just even more block scaling. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're about to fight an elite and the boss. Those are two situations where you need defense. So, uh... 
we're not sure what elite we're going to get here. It could be... I can't be Lagavulin, so it could either be Gremlin Knob or Tri Centuries. So we'll see. Against Gremlin Knob, to be honest, um, footwork isn't that great, but we'll see. All right, let's go into the shop. Okay. Shop 2 has some interesting stuff. So, at Shop 2, we could buy an Anchor, which is tremendous, start each combat with 10 block, right? And that would allow us to just have a safe turn 1 to not even have to play defense and, and set up a bunch of stuff and charge up our Shuriken, you know, um, if we wanted. Uh, so there's that, right? It's a possibility. We could also go Infinite Blades if we want to have Shivs. You know, they're pretty good with our Shuriken. Um, Piercing Whale is one of the best cards uh, that the Silent has. It's like an AoE that makes all enemies lose 6 strength. I mean, it just is... It's only one-time use, um, but it is devastating. And uh, you can do a lot of work with this. We saw Choke. We talked about it. Skewer is a card where if you have a bunch of energy, you know, okay, I guess you can make this work. Uh, but, uh, you know, we could do three for 21, but, you know, it's not that exciting. Now, we do have the Shuriken, so we could scale this up to be even more potent, but it's pretty slow. Honestly, the card that is exploding out to me is Hand of Greed. So Hand of Greed... Um, is a two energy card that does 20 damage and if it's fatal you get 20 gold so if we use this correctly we can just make a whole bunch of extra money to make our deck stronger uh, so I'm gonna take it and we can't buy anything else so we'll just go out and say thank you very much and we will fight this elite all right so we got gremlin knob so what you want to do on gremlin knob it's obviously uh, we want to do as much damage as possible. So all these defensive cards are garbage. And we're going to backstab without any question. Now, I could play all-out attack because it's great. But the problem is I don't want to play all-out attack and then discard my calculated gamble. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just play this now and draw a bunch of cards. Okay. Okay. We're going to get our Shuriken proct. We don't need to play this because um, we need this fight to be over fast. The question is, do we want to Power Potion? What are we going to draw next turn? If we could draw this, uh, this will help us out a lot, as will this. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go one, two, and three. And we've gotten down to half health. Here we go. We're going to get banged up here, but we do have a fire... A rest site where we could uh you know use our tremendous pillow all right this is perfect look at this guy he's weakened and with our paper crane he's sitting here doing three so 100 percent um oh my god draw next turn strikes okay let's think about this let's do the math eight plus seven plus seven right 22 damage um and then we'll boost up our strength by one so he'll be at 18 and we will be able to at least do 16 damage. We just need we need to draw one attack of any kind um, to take him down. I like that instead of playing dash and sucker punch because although this this will not give us a strength proc, it will block the three damage. Um, but uh, we it's not like we won't become vulnerable. Um, so let's just go ahead and do it this way. One two, three. And let's see what we can do. All right. So we just need to draw one more attack. And oh, we got lucky, people. Look at this. This is why Hand of Greed is great. So we're going to pay for itself just like this. Extra 20 gold. And an extra 34 gold. We got the Darkstone Periapt, which is not very good 
um, quite frankly, but maybe if we get a curse, we get some extra hit points. And we got a flex potion, which will be good against the boss, and we get to add a card. So what do we want? For my money, Dagger Throw is a pretty fantastic card. It helps you cycle. Masterful Stab is decent, but every time you take damage, it becomes more expensive, so it's good early-ish. And we backflip is great, but I think I'm going to take one dagger throw and be happy with it just to get a little bit of draw and cycle. Now, I could rest here, right, and get 22 to go to 68 plus 15, which would overheal, but um, I'm not going to do that. The reason I'm not going to heal is this. We're fighting Hexaghost. Hexaghost, his big attack is on turn two, the first time he does it anyway, and when he does it, it's actually based, the damage it does is actually based on how much health you have. So if I heal, then that attack is just going to do more damage. And given that, like, it, it's less valuable to rest in front of this particular boss. And I'm not, like, completely injured. So I'm just going to go to Smith and see what do we want to upgrade. Like, what card would be a clutch upgrade for us, right? So Hand of Greed um, makes it do give more money and deal more damage, which is you know pretty tempting. Uh, backflip gives you a bunch more block, which is great. Dagger throw, more damage. Uh, but dash, you know, I think dash plus is, would be fantastic. It's just like every time we play it, we're going to be blocking well and doing good damage. So that's uh, a lot of where I'm thinking. And then Sucker Punch allows us to... Uh, get an extra week. The Calculated Gamble, of course, does make it so it doesn't exhaust, but I'm not really 100% convinced I want to keep drawing this um, every time because it does take up a, a card slot. If you like, if you draw a hand that you like it and you get this, well, then you don't want to use it, and it could have been a card that was better. You know, it does save you in times when you drew a bunch of stuff you didn't need, but I don't know how often I want that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do Dash Plus. Just work on making our deck stronger by upgrading the cards. And here we go. Hexaghost time. Alright, so this is a terrible first hand because he doesn't attack on the first turn. So, uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to use my power potion and see what we can get. Okay. So we got some funny stuff. Um... Wraith form is incredibly powerful, um, but and it will nullify his second turn. But then we will be losing dexterity and unable to block for pretty much the rest of the fight. After image will just help us, you know, get a little bit of extra block here and there, and thousand cuts will help us do damage even more. Um, honestly, for me. This is the most powerful, but I don't think we're set up to kill the guy fast enough for this to uh, reap full rewards. We could save it. We could not play it now and play it later, perhaps. Um, but, eh. And this is going to do extra damage, but this guy has so many hit points that I think I'd rather just um, have a little bit of extra block. So I'm going to play this. And... I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to just do that. Very good. This is what I was hoping for. You really want to weaken this guy for his turn two. And that happened. And we can build up our Shuriken. So let's do it. Great. So we did 42 damage on the first turn and weakened him. So it's pretty good. So he wants to do... Uh, damage to us, and he's going to do 12. But look at this. We play footwork. Okay. And we play dash. And we are blocking for full because of our paper crane shenanigans and our footwork giving us dexterity and our dash being upgraded. It's a beautiful thing. All right. So he wants to do six, and we'll go ahead, 
keep the weak on. I'm going to dagger throw and discard my defend. Okay. And then, uh, because of our after image, I play all out attack and we get three block, which will fully block. We get a charge of Shuriken and we're cooking with gas. This guy really doesn't do a ton of damage outside of um, the burn cards and every few turns. So if you keep him weakened, especially with our paper crane, this guy's just in the worst possible shape. Go ahead and do that. And just because we can. Look at this. How's 27 block? That would be footwork. All right. And he wants to do three. Hmm. Uh, I think I'll just hand a greed and strike. Take one damage. I could have, of course, blocked there, but one damage is just not really a big deal. Okay, so now he's going to buff himself up and get ready to do another large attack on us. Another thing you have to remember when you fight the boss is that when you beat the boss, you're going to get to heal. And at this low of a level of difficulty, we're going to heal all the way to full. So a few hit points here and there doesn't impact our next act. All right, and I'm going to go ahead. We weakened him and do this. This burn damage is going to do two damage to us, but this does get absorbed by block. It's not like uh, some of the cards we looked at with the Ironclad where it goes through block. It just takes it from your life total. This is going to do damage to us, but our block will absorb it. So I'm going to do this. Get us a charge of Shuriken to boost our strength, and we'll fully block. And we can just do that even if we need more. And he is going to inflame. And he boosts his strength, and he wants to come try to do a bigger attack on us, but He's weakened, so that attack really isn't there. Let's just go ahead and backflip first so we can draw some extra cards, see what we get. And beautiful. I'm going to keep the weak alive. And we're blocking for full, so let's just all out attack. And go. All right. Okay. All right, hand agreed next turn. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can set up to get Hand of Greed to kill him next turn. Uh, well, I have 28. I can make it 38, and then he'd be at 40, but now, yeah, it's not enough. Um, Uh, I'm actually not going to play Dagger Throw just because I don't want to draw Hand of Greed. Oh, you actually, no, never mind. Yes, I will. Well, I was going to say, it's tricky. Cool thing you could do with Dagger Throw is just discard a burn card so that you don't take the damage. Um, but I, I have so much block, it doesn't matter. I'm going to try to save Hand of Greed. Now, the optimal play here would be to sit on Hand of Greed and just keep blocking until um, it comes around again so we can get the extra gold. But sometimes against a boss, you don't really have that luxury. So he wants to do a bunch of damage to us. Luckily, we weaken him, and that damage goes down to 12. And honestly... I think I can, I think I can do it. I'm going to save Hand Agreed. Let's just see if we can get lucky and, and draw it. We only have to go through our deck a few times. <laughs> so it just becomes a question of how many of these we can take in. Okay, great. And how many backflips we can draw to draw cards. Beautiful. Um, dagger throw gets us through more cards. We don't need any block. Get rid of that and get our strength up. Okay. So now we could kill this guy pretty much with anything we draw. It's just... Can we block for two turns and try to get a chance at Hand of Greed? I 
This is too bad. This is a, a rough hand. Uh, I can Survivor. Actually, no, I can Survivor. Oop, no, no, Survivor the Burn Plus. Yeah, there you go. And we're fine. All right. So now we're starting to redraw. But we're also drawing a bunch of stuff that I don't like. Uh, so now it's like, do we want to take, you know, eight damage to have a chance at getting 20 gold? It's a full heal that we get from beating the boss, so I think we can do it, but it's getting dicey. This is a very greedy play, but it's called the Hand of Greed for a reason. There it is. We got paid off for our decadence. Bam. 20 extra gold. And that's nothing to sneeze at. Plus the 100 here and a block potion, which is tremendous, and a card. And what do we get? Fantastic. Uh, so we get a, but an offering of some uh, very nice rare cards here. So bullet time uh, is a cool card where you can't draw any more cards but what you do ideally is you have a full hand of like 10 cards and you play this for all of your energy or if you have an energy relic, maybe you have some more. It reduces the cost of everything in your hand to zero. So you can just play your whole hand, uh, which is a really good thing to do. Glass knife is just like, I do eight damage twice the first time and you know with Shuriken, this can scale up, but it decreases over time. And then there's die, 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 which is just an AOE card. Now, how much AoE do we have at the moment? We have one. So, I think that we would benefit from... Um, you could make a case for any of these. These are all fun cards. This is a lot of single target damage, uh, you know, that you can use early on and just wreck things. Uh, but I, I'm going to probably take Die, Die, Die here just because uh, I like to have two or three AoE cards by the time I'm done. And this, in tandem with our other AoE card, will just make AoE fights in general much easier for us. So uh, I'm going to take this for the sure thing. This is a good card, too. It's, it's fun um, when used correctly. But I, I like that one. And then let's see what relic we get. Okay, so we can have the Coffee Dripper, which gives us energy at the start of our turn, but we can't rest anymore. Okay, so that's kind of reverse synergy with the Regal Pillow. But if we're not taking damage, then it's okay anyway. Remember, but we're about to heal up to full. There's other ways that you can heal, just not at rest sites. Um, the Slaver's Collar gives us extra energy during boss and elite combats. And the Velvet Choker, which is kind of pretty much you can't really hardly ever take this on the Silent because the Silent wants to play a lot of cards, so being capped at six cards per turn is just not worth it with the Silent, in my opinion. So I'm going to take the Slaver's Collar. Coffee Dripper is uh, really tempting, um, but this just has, you know, no drawbacks, uh, and it lets us go hunt elites and, you know, be stronger in those fights, and I think that will benefit us, um, but you could take Coffee Dripper and do fine. As a beginning player, this is a little bit scary because if you make some mistakes you can't as easily remedy them at a campfire but more advanced players enjoy a relic like this because they find other ways to heal or they just don't take that much damage um, but I understand that this is kind of scary looking so I'll just take a, you know a middle ground it does nothing against regular hallway fights but it's great in other situations you know the elite and boss situations. All right, act two, the city. Well, everyone, um, I think this is a good place to end this first episode of the beginner's guide here in 2022 to Slay the Spire with the silent. We have played together through the first act and we will do the same thing in this act, talking through the decisions we make, discussing the strategy and showing you um, what the silent is all about given what we have to work with. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I hope this was helpful. Take care.